Five, four, three, two, one. You're live with Neve. Here we are, everybody. Happy Friday. We are somewhat past the hour of 10 o'clock on the east coast of North America. It's a beautiful day here for anybody in the neighborhood, all 30 million of you or whatever. Uh, it's great. It's a little cool out, but I'm loving it. I am so tired of winter and all that slop. I love skiing and all that good snow time shit, but it's time for spring. It's almost time for summer. Actually, it's always time for summer if you live in New Jersey. At any rate, I hope you're having a great day. I have a great guest, a music, great musical guest. I've got my usual cohorts here. I've got Sam. I've got Irish. Uh, I've got all kinds of fun stuff happening, and I hope you guys are just planning a killer day because good morning, Susan. It, it, it's just such a glorious day. And, you know, I, last weekend, I have to say, I apologize to everyone. Uh, I had to switch the show. I very rarely uh, cancel a show that's live, and I apologize uh, I had the evil seafood flu stomach, which was no fun. Uh, hit me Thursday at about three in the morning. I'd had dinner that night kind of late and it kept me in its grip ugh, or in the grip of the toilet, the porcelain God that I prayed to relentlessly that weekend until uh, Monday. I really couldn't eat like Sunday. I ate a little bit of soup, chicken soup. Didn't it stayed down by Monday. I was starving, but my stomach hurt. I felt too shitty to eat. Tuesday came. It was finally gone. I ate like a barbarian. I felt it, it was just, it was awesome. And uh, so here I am. The show's about to start. We've got to bring on my cohorts. Uh, let's see what's going on in the world. It appears to me that the Russians are getting kind of pounded uh, despite their best efforts. I got to say this for the Ukrainians, there's some ballsy bastards. And uh, I'm always kind of a like to protect the little guy. You know, the Ukrainians have their issues. They've done bad things historically, but they've also, they're people like anywhere else. And, uh, you know, it, it's just awful watching what's going on. So I'm kind of enjoying watching the them uh, get their ass kicked and handed to them, um, hopefully quite well. If it, I hope it continues what I'm trying to say. So let's see what we've got. We've got the beautiful Sam Rourke from Nashville and Kentucky or Mathsucky, uh, as the case may be. How, how are you? You look gorgeous today. I know you've got big things happening today. Oh, yeah. I'm like half ready for a million things today. But, yeah, I'm here. Well, good. I'm, uh, I raised my coffee glass, too. Mine's a little larger than yours, but. That's a guy thing. I like it. Bigger the better, we think, you know. So, uh, you know, I know you've got lots of your, your other side of life going on, but you have any gig stuff going on this weekend at all? Are you, you going out? I actually the have yeah, just some private music stuff going on this weekend. I'm not playing anywhere out. I'm doing some work here uh, around the studio, and then I'm cool. playing a party on Saturday. So Excellent. Tomorrow. Oh, oh, that's tomorrow. Holy that God. is tomorrow. And then uh, we have Kinky Friedman coming on tomorrow, which is going to oh, yeah, be exotic. That's gonna be amazing. That's gonna be that, that will be fun. Um, I've been listening to Kinky, and then I, I, I listened to a bunch of his audio novels. <laughs> yeah. All I can say is whatever medication they give him, I need some. Of it. I, I don't know what it is, but the guy is just hysterically funny. He's got a great nature. Uh, how can you not love him? He's a friend of animals, big time. His family owns a ranch. Yeah. And they take in all these stray animals that are going to die because they're so old and crotchety and crippled up. And if you, you know, how can you not love a guy like that? He's got, you know, he puts his money where his mouth is. 
He's got enough money to survive. He's been in Django Unchained. He's got his five or six books out there that he's done. He's got albums. And he's just a unique character in American history. And that's why I dig having him on. Yeah. And uh, But enough about that. Let's bring on our madman from Detroit, the one and only, the Where's talented, the, the man with an empty coffee cup. This oh, is not okay. Sad. This is not okay. Would you I like had... a moment to refill your coffee? No, no. If I drink no. any more coffee, I actually might explode. Oh, you're turning into me with coffee, are you? Well, this color doesn't come naturally, and not everybody can pull it off, but large amounts, copious amounts of coffee turn your blood pressure into just a spiking mess, and it's it. Oh, like, yeah, it's yeah. I mean, I can imagine. It's sort of like that's like the most uh, addictive drug I do these days is caffeine. I swear by it. I'm not going to say it's the most addictive drug I do these days, but I tell you what, it's ranking oh, in the top oh, three. Oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm so, a uh, we, I love caffeine. Oh, that and chocolate. Just give me chocolate. Uh, you know, and let me tell you something. If you ever stop drinking, your craving for sugar will still be there because it's like I, I love nothing better than to go downtown and buy a five dollar cupcake and stuff that sucker in my mouth. And it's just like I've, I've seen script. your cupcake episodes before. I mean, I I'm I, like I'm just hoping that there's somebody that's capable of heimlicking it out of your gullet. At, oh, I have. Have, that's what my happen. girlfriend's for. Yeah, this is like okay. Neil's eating cupcakes. Keep the uh, the Heimlich people on standby because it's it's well, not pretty, folks. I've seen it. Yeah, it, it, I don't know what happened, but I had a donut seizure on one of the shows. <laughs> a donut <laughs> or, seizure. Yeah, I don't know. I think it was around I Christmas time. That. How would what's I describe it? it? I'll let, I'll let hell Irish... is a donut seizure. I want to sign up for it because it sounds like a lot of fun. I want to get donut seized. Yeah. Actually, what you want to do is we all need to have a show here in New York together where we just run amok in the city and we'll do the show and, and we'll, you know. Oh, and try not to go to jail. Cool. Well, we, we're, no. No, we're bringing jail money, Sam, because listen. We're bringing jail I, I money. Got, hey, I got a funny no, feeling when up this north, happens, I have a so. genuine question because I'm curious. I know it stops in Kentucky. Um, well, actually, it stops at the border of Kentucky because we ain't got them. It's nice down here. But we have uh, Bell Bondsman's down here. Y'all have them? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I have one as a friend Ooh, of mine. Good, we can go raise hell and eat cornbread all day. Hell yeah. No cornbread and pie eating contest. Pie eating contest. Maybe we get a bunch of fans to meet us somewhere in New York and we'll take over. I'll get us a Sam, you know, party I room. I challenge you to a pie eating contest very soon. I can eat the best pies out of all the pies. I'm a fat bastard. I can fuck some pie up. Let me just tell you, I may be skinny, but I'm like that little fucker gnaws like 180 oh, hot dogs dog down. Contest. You know that Kobayashi, whatever his name is? You throw me in there. I haven't, I've always been scrawny, and it's the drummer thing, man. When I used to play like, you know, 12 hours, 6 hours, 10 hours a day, I would eat like more than anybody on the, you know. They'd always be like, look at that skinny fucker, man. How the hell does he do that? Now I'm a fat bastard, you know. I, I know how to do that. It goes that way. That's those, well, you know, most cookie. drummers are physically fit that I know. Like, right. I, I actually don't know. Like, both. I mean, both of you, of course, look at you. But, like, most drummers that I know are just like you all. Like, I've never met, like, an out-of-shape drummer. So, I think I that, mean, that probably has something to you do. You do with. a 40-minute set. I tell you what, by the time you're done, your forearms are burning. Your lungs yeah. are burning. Absolutely. Your, 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 your calf muscles are this big around. It is a damn good workout. And if you sing while you're doing it, let me just tell you something. You are banging some calories out because yeah, your I don't. Time point. I mean, I used, I've been doing it so long that I don't think about it. In fact, it would be awkward not to be either doing backups or singing. You know, it doesn't matter to me. Whatever. We got a gig. What do you need? <laughs> you know? Right, right. But, but the energy, like I used to eat a it was routine for at least 20 years. Every gig, if we had dinner included, I'd have my damn steak, baked potato, and a salad. Kyle led up with a, a fine order of blonde, six foot, longing giraffe neck. That was I was set, man. And Neil was shitting in twelve pounds. Neck? Yeah, well, I like the girls with the nice. Be in there. Well, I like the I, long, I lean about, women. Remember the remember the old school ones where they had the links to lengthen their neck. And oh, their I love that. I love that. Tradition was like the long neck, and then I think it's Japanese. They it's the smaller feet. And that that, that that shit was barbarous. Yeah, they blind the feet. Oh, that's, they, they do all kinds of crazy shit to women around the world that I won't even they get do. into. And you don't have to. I mean, look, uh, they they come pre pretty. It's fine. Look at that. Oh, the wrong way. Thanks, guys. We love you, Sammy. 
<laughs> really did. It, what about you, like you those are... neck stretcher things though? Because they have like those that they put on them, and then like in other cultures too, they even do like the lip stretching too. Well, I still thought that that would be great. With the, uh, the ears. All we got to do is go down to the rock and roll and see a bunch of punkers standing around. There's all these guys. They got the big plugs in their ears and plugs mm -hmm. in their nose, probably a plug in their ass for all I know. But the bottom line is <laughs> it's weird. You know, every generation has the kids do some crazy shit that their parents go out of their fucking minds. And then old guys like me sit around and they go, oh, these kids, they're such fucks. They're just little assholes. But you know what? Most of the kids you, I know. You were there. We were all there at one oh, point. Oh, I was and there. We, and it, we have evolved to the crotchety old people that we are. But, and it, but it, you know I what? think it's doomed to happen to everybody. I don't want to hear a fucking thing. My generation ate Todd Pods. Yes, I'm that's true. That's what, what that my Sam. generation is left with. Like, and look at them. They're on the fucking Tide Pods. Pod the Tide Pods. They don't only like, just eat them. The they go on and they make a, what is that new latest Twitter? Uh, not Twitter. That's the latest show. I'm an old bastard. TikTok. They go on yeah. TikTok and do the most absurd. TikTok's and, fun though, man. Like, it that. is funny. It shows me though how far we've dumbed down the norm. We're, if you, you know, you go to the Museum of Natural History in the city. They got this wall called the Hall of Man, and it shows us evolving up from whatever species we used to be. Some guy will go, I know monkey. I'm like, shit, you got more genetics in common with a monkey, motherfucker. And, you know, it would be some big redneck guy. I related to no monkey. Well, what happened is if the Hall of Evolution. If you take science or evolution and explain it to anyone that's from where I'm from, you're the devil, man. Just Fuck know that. yeah. Like, you are fucking with the Bible. In, yeah. in our biology class, I promise you, like, and in college, it's hilarious because I had to, like, relearn all of it myself. But my biology teacher refused to teach us about Darwin. Period. Like, we were not going to talk about it. Like, it was not to be discussed. Like. Oh, uh, and this was a state funded Darwin school. Is an incredible like, they just wouldn't guy, talk man. about it. Anything that somebody tells us we shouldn't read should be required reading, probably. It's just like with the news Good and point. stuff. <laughs> when they say that they're going to fucking form a committee to figure out what's going on, all that means is they're going to get a bunch of people who are a bunch of old bastards sitting in a room. Well, I think we should do this. And ultimately, what happens is they end up sending kids off to get wasted on the battlefield. I mean, again, I'm, I don't usually do politics, but I'll mention it for a few minutes because it's so omniprescient in today's society. I mean, and there's so many people who are extreme in their views on both sides, and both sides think they're not doing what they accuse the other side of doing relentlessly. They sit and do this back and forth and back and forth. And after a while, I'm like, you know, in my whole lifetime, this question I'm going to ask anybody watching and anybody who's sitting here just talking. After the election's over, we've all in our life voted for people because we wanted things to be good. And I don't care who, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat. People want to do good things for their family. They think they're doing what's right for the other side. They mean well. The other side thinks they're doing right for their side. The problem is both parties then, it, it's set up that way because we don't meet on any substantive issues to get it done. We meet to, you know, it's like the, the relentless back and forth. I mean, you know, I can see why Democrats hated on Donald Trump. I can also see why Republicans are really dissatisfied with fucking Biden. I know people who are Democrats. So <coughs> getting back to it, this is the question I was going to ask to bring it back to Hill. Have you ever voted for a person that four or eight years later you thought, looking back and you thought, you know, I voted for them and they just did every damn thing I wanted. They got it all done. They're, they're so honorable and so good. You know, the last president who balanced the budget was fucking Bill Clinton. Republicans hate him because he got a blowjob in the White House. Frankly, that's between him and his wife and I don't give a shit. What can I say? I, mean, I like Billy. From my appearance aside, I'm very conservative. I am... Mm -hmm pretty much a middle of the road but when it comes to politics you know i'm pretty conservative and i will tell yes. you that the least of our fucking concerns should have been bill getting his willy wet yes he did a absolutely. good job i Fiscally almost think that he's a postcard possibly as far as running the country he did a great job and Look, right now we, we're at this point where you it's sad that you can't even pick out a good president before him no, if you even say anything FDR? now, the orthodoxy in both parties just jump into your shit. I'm kind of a libertarian, but I'm a right wing guy and that protect us, keep us safe. Good yeah. money policy. As far as all the other shit, I have to say this. My Republican friends disagree with me, but fucking make a national health plan, period. They got to be on it, too. 
not this tiered system. Make it national. Make it so that politicians have the same shit. And make it good for everybody. Because we, if we can afford all the things, I used to buy it too. I used to be as a Republican to make the argument, well, we can free up choice and we can do this and we can do all that. And I agree. That should have been done anyway, though. The fact that the laws were written by lobbyists. So <laughs> that said, guys, um, we're moving on past our purview. That's all we'll talk about uh, today about this type of uh, thing. Oh, we got somebody who wants a foodie show. Good morning, Sam. I'm game. For, for yeah, man. shows, I'm game. Good morning, Susan, yeah. Pamela. I like food. Oh, I love food. love food. So uh, let's just take a little break here, and we'll be back in a minute. Thank you, everybody. It is like 10, 19. The show started fashionably late, and uh, we're going to be a little ahead of the curve, but Oh, mm -hmm. Sammy's okay. She's beautiful. Yeah, look all, at her. All that don't come Guys, I'm so simple. sorry. I have to be. I have an interview at the governor's office this morning. I'm doing hot yeah. shit. Hot You're looking shit. good. Hot remember shit. remember that bag of envelopes I mailed you? Yes. Okay, just, uh, you know how to handle these things. Don't IBF. It's on the lowdown. IBF. All four million of our viewers are now uh, in privy to our little secret. It's the Biff. The Biff O'Harris. We're off. All right, I'm coming to reward them and to take it on, man. Little so Leonard Cohen song. I got a loose. Oh, what do you got? What do you got going on? I see that look in your eye, man. What's <laughs> happening? I've been waiting on this for a while. I want to give a shout out to my new bandmates. Creating a disturbance is now a thing. I have Mark J.K. on guitars, thrashing guitar. I have David Hudson on thumping bass. Revan McGee is going to be front in the band with yours truly behind the kit once again. After a very, very long layoff, we are excited for this project. Um, I'm just stoked, man. I just want to give a shout out to these guys for getting this thing rolling. Well, that, that's really excellent, man. Um, I, I just love seeing people who have that dream or spark. It's a, I, I love watching kids do it. Getting back to what I said about all the kids earlier in the first segment about how people always gripe and moan about how bad they are. I have to tell you something. I know the kids I know in my family and my friends' kids, in, in, as far as music business uh, kids and offspring, they're all going to school for things like advanced degrees, lawyers, accountants, all this crap, all which is great. We need it. They're all pretty on the ball fucking kids. And, and I'll tell you what, it's just something that's a conceit that old people have. We all get it. I get it. I do it too sometimes. I'll look at some kid acting the fool, and then I have to just remember, you know, I'm 60 years old. I'm still acting the fool occasionally. Um, <laughs> I've learned enough from acting a little too much the fool how to carry myself much better now. And that, I, I, But it's great to see you have a band knowing your past. And, and dude, I can tell you, it's, you know, I, I am freeing up time. Um I had a, a bit of a, a little bit of a health thing going on and right. you know, I, it's just priorities, man. I have, Did that that is I all good with do. that is all good. They yeah. took it off. Right. But uh, you know, here's the thing. There's things that I want to do. And every now and again, you get a kick, quick swift kick in your ass to remind oh, you yeah. that tomorrow is not promised for any of us. No. And no, there are not. things that I want to come do with you guys. There's absolutely. stuff that Sam and I have talked about that I am just absolutely mm -hmm. going to make happen. I will make time for this. And, you know, this band here is something that is, it's the end victory for me. It is right. the end victory of a very long, hard, you know, arduous thing that I'm like, you know what? Finally, it's time to live. Well, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, and I'm going to keep it short and brief, uh, go back and look at the archives on YouTube. Uh, for my initial interview, you came on as a guest and uh, became a, a, a co-host here, and I, I'm glad to have met you. And you know, 
it's like your family now. And all I could say, you know, no, I fucking I, love you guys, man. Seriously, man, you guys have our family. I, I, for everybody watching, I just want to say, go back and watch the interview. It's uh, live Absolutely with me. It's amazing. It's an amazing Irish. Movie. It's really there's good. it. it that's how we first met. So I don't want to say too much because I think if you watch it and then if you've watched the show since you'll, you'll see how Irish kind of unfolded. I mean, after the first day I knew you, I, I, I think I have a pretty good bullshit detector. And the first time I met you, I didn't know what to expect. Of course I had my preconceived notions that I thought about, but I keep, yeah. you know, I did. I'm like thinking to myself, well, maybe this guy will come over to my house and like make you know, a lampshade out of my head or something. Uh, who knows? And then I got you on the show, and after, even during before show, when we and it talk, turns out I'm I was an like, idiot. and it turns out he's just another <laughs> lunatic. And and for those and of you who don't crazy know, the part too about criminals, like yeah, it, I mean, I, I can speak as one because I am one. The craziest thing about criminals is most of them, if you get to know them, are exactly what you just said. Listen, yeah. you know, some of the best people I know have been through the hardest times. Um, I recently hired a, a, a young lady named Anna on my, on my work crew and she's going through a hard time. And, you know, you could tell when she, when I met her, she doesn't know my, didn't know my story, of course. And uh, she came on and she was just like, Oh I've got a, you know, I've got a ankle person. I'm like, dude, we're felon friendly here. You know, right. Everybody I know, if you, if you don't have a, at least a moderate criminal history of shenanigans that I probably can't relate to you at all. Well, <laughs> yeah. you know, most anything I've ever gotten uh, in trouble for is just um, I can't say allegedly I, about 30 years ago. I got a DUI. I was 10 foot tall and bulletproof. A couple of redneck chicks bouncing around, just acting like, you know, I was down south and acting crazy. Girls go around the outside. Let's around just outside. say this. I had an interesting week with the with the peeps. And uh, and what happened is the day of the gig. The day after it was Saturday on Friday at like three o'clock in the afternoon, the club owner, who was a guy named Brillo, Brillo is the kind of guy who weighs in somewhere between 350 and 450. Big, big old boy. Now, the name he named That's Brillo, crap right there. Is, you know, he's a toe headed bastard, fucking red, crazy fro, crazy looking afro, and he wore overalls with no shirt. And I want to tell you something. This guy <laughs> could pick you up and crush you like a can. And I remember he told me, he looked at me, he goes, he said, son, I put my bar on the line for you. He goes, like, you don't own any property here in Georgia, and you're going to get the gig now and play. You're not going to be driving drunk with two floozies in the car and acting like a lunatic. Well, I'll just say this. There's allegedly a lot of other things that night involved. It's like makes your nose scratch. It was an ugly episode, and anybody who goes through that even for a minute, you, if you, there's some people who don't learn from it ever. Nope. But you got to have had a really awful life and existence where jail looks better than anything you could do with yourself, and I feel bad. There's a lot of people who get stuck in there just being dumbasses. I mean, there's a lot of – in our society, if you look at the number of black kids compared to white kids who get tossed in the, in the slammer for weed, Again, that falls into the crotchety white people going, well, look at those kids. They're smoking weed. I know every motherfucker I grew up with, and these people oh, in powerful every positions. Every one of their yuppy little shithead kids that they said would never do that shit. Oh, yeah. And, but, you know, they're like, oh, no. Sorry. It's Sorry. stupid. It's just, just like dumb. how the trust fund baby over here blew an entire two trust funds and learned to cook meth. There you go. <laughs> he said I would never do it. No, that, but you know what? Happen. But you know what? Look where you are now. Right. And right. You, you learn from adversity. You grow from adversity. I mean, it can it can bury you. It can, it's absolutely it's can a, nothing you. like a good it's ass whipping to fix, make you get on the straight and narrow. It you know, get meal. It could have been me. I mean, it was me, yeah. but it could have been any be anybody watching. It yep. could have yes. been any of your kids watching. So that's I've that's seen cool. people who are middle class and they're you know they're upper middle class. They're they're not rich. They they have a nice home. They've tool income, a couple of kids. I've seen the most perfect families raise the most egregious children. Oh. And I know, man, I'm I'm a I'm an evil stepchild, man. My my stepfather thought, you know, I was devil incarnate and he, he beat the wrong. devil out of me until one day I told him it was time to stop, and I'll leave that for another episode. I'll just but say yeah, this. Man, never, I'll tell you what, going never, back to that, it, it's the show. I mean, there's, there's, I've met so many great people from Toby to Jules to Pam to, to, yep. to, 
you know, I, I mean, Kim to, I mean, Susan, everybody here, it, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it's, it's an, it's a neat thing to have. It's, it's a life I never thought I'd get. And it, it let's live it, man. I, I, I'm living. so happy guys. We're going to go to a break and we're going to bring on our guest. Uh, Memphis gold is killer guitar player and uh I'm, right. i know you're gonna love him i i was listening to his stuff last night and this morning and uh i just i, I he's a new friend for the show i tell you what i can just tell you he's gonna be a regular because this gentleman is he's just got a, he's just such a likable guy too um so for everybody watching i'm gonna go ahead and queue up another break here it is uh about we're back on the clock it's 10 29 so we're back we're telling you Try an echo. That was pretty good. All right. And if we can only find the commercial overbed, where the hell did that bloody commercial go? Oh, no. We need the spot. Oh, that's. Hey there, it's Kevin Sorbo here, and you lucky, lucky, lucky people, you are you are live. You're live with Nev or Neve or Neve, Nevi. I don't know. I can't say the dude's name. Anyway, you're on live with him, so I don't know. I guess that's a pretty good thing. Hi, I'm Trumpeter Greg Adams, and I'm live with Neve. Nev. Hi. A Nevi? Nevi? Nevi. It's got to feel pretty good to get ribbed by Hercules, though. So. <laughs> it does. I just, as long as he doesn't kick my ass, I have a feeling my life expectancy would be pretty slim <laughs> if old Kevin decided to kick me. That's when you advocate for a Kevin weapon in your hand. Kevin's a big bastard, man. I wouldn't <laughs> want him jumping on me. Yes. Sort of like wheeled, you, Iris. He wields a sword. You yes. Know, they, there's, there's I'm serious. That you really don't want to fight the guy that's actually wielding his what sword. What do you mean he a sword? I do. I have a big ass stick, mm-hmm. and what I do if somebody come in my house, I'm gonna get buck ass naked and chase them up the fucking street with my big old kanji pole. I have a bow staff. I'm leaving that alone. Let me just tell you yeah. something. Well, the like sheer sight. Fucking broadswords. There's oh hell. Uh, listen, I think remember, that we should arm... all go back to war that way. I mean, let's, no, let's, let's, an let's armed society is. With the handkerchief society. hanging off of it and shit yeah. <laughs> at the end of the broadsword. Go all Braveheart and shit, you know? I will catch the blood of my enemies. I yes. think the problem with America is we can't drink our the blood of our enemies from our skull anymore. Their skull, not ours. Well, let, let, let's be honest about that. So back in the day, war was serious. Do you think Vladimir Putin, Zelensky, and, and, and Biden are all going to are gonna lace up a sword and run at each other full tilt going, ah! No, I can't even. Uh, I'm sorry. To. I respect the office, but Lee gosh, our poor president, he'd be running towards his handler saying, Oh, what's what's going on? That's when Come that on. war was serious. Now we're blowing people up with video games, and that's the it, problem. Well, everything's just insane. So, all I can tell everybody love your family, take care of them, be good to other people, quit being an ass to everybody around you. Knock if people don't like you, there's a that reason. Part. Stop it. We're all tired of it. Your kids are tired of it. Our old people, they're, we're tired of it. Don't be an ass, man. Or we're going to come out there and church you up. And make oh, you go listen, cut a fucking can, sweat. We can create a world full of music and a bunch of people having a good time and, and if, laughing and enjoying this freaking thing. If people thing from the music life. business ran the fucking world, I guarantee you, our, our guest Memphis was in the military. He's in the Navy and served. Thank you thanking him for his service too. Absolutely. But w- there's lots of people in the music business who have, and I don't care if they're left wing or right wing. There's a lot of really smart people. We can't possibly do any wrong. Then what's going on right now? <laughs> Period. It's just insane. So on that note, let's talk some rock and roll and have fun. I Guys, love rock and roll and fun. Rock and roll. Yeah. Our, our political shit is over and uh, let's, let's bring on our guest. Our musical guest is a man you're going to love. And here he is. Hello. I can't. I can't hear you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's go. Oh, no. Could you hear us at all? I can't hear, hear you for some reason. Can you hear me? Nope. You can't hear anybody. Um, since 
he can't hear me. Um, I'm going to type him a note. Sam, send him a note. Tell him to log off and log back in, and we'll just keep this party going. That's all it is. His all mute's right. mic's probably on his phone. Okay, we'll be right back, everybody. We're going to be right back. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Send him a note. I think that's a note. So we're going <coughs> to... I'm sending him a message. Okay. All right, cool. While we're doing that, um, I'm going to write a note to log out. <laughs> I need to have these handy so I can just go like that. Hang on, guys. I got to fix myself. My I have like a half suit on right now because I refuse to wear my button up before this starts. So like my pants are riding down. Hang on. One all second. right. Oh, we, we've got all kinds oh, that's of, got us all kind of things to think about. This morning, guys. Mm hmm. Is it dapper? Is it dashing? You got the approval? There we go. All right, Sam. All right. Our, our guest, as you can see, we've got him. Uh, he'll be logging out and logging back in. All right. And we're, it's back to us. God, I hate it when that happens. So, Sam, but, what do you got going on today? I, that's what I'm curious about. I, yes. I want to hear what's happening. Oh, so today I'm actually uh, up for a state position as a college student. So there's a board of regents for every college it, it basically every university, every community college has a school school board that meets with the governor. And I'm running for student regent for the state of Tennessee. So when the General Assembly will meet every quarter, they go to vote on any bills that may be affecting higher education. I would be the elected official voting for the state of Tennessee. So it'll be my first elected position within the state. So pretty excited. Awesome. And I interview for it in one hour. So how does that feel like going from one end of the spectrum to the next? Wild. Yeah. I mean, I, I crazy. I'm meeting, I'm meeting with legislators uh, privately next week. I'm spending the entire day at the state Capitol. Uh, and that's weird. That's right. Pretty surreal. Again, it just goes to where we were to where we can be. It's all about, you know, hard work, dedication, thought processing and say, Hey, you know what? I'm not happy with where I'm at. I'm going to move up. And there's no better example in my life than you. I, I'm proud of you, kid. I appreciate it. It's, um, it's been a really gratifying process too, just to like experience the change in my life to go from being looked at as worthless as not contributing to society as, never having a potential to being somebody that people actually respect. And that's probably the, the most important thing to me is that I've finally started earning people's respect back. And, um, you know, coming from being a drug addict to being allowed in the state Capitol with free reign, not being taken away in handcuffs. <laughs> it's pretty wild. Um, There's but, still know, time for that. Don't worry. Yeah, there's still time for that. But, you know, my whole thing is to to get in and lobby to make a difference. And I'm, I'm getting that opportunity. Like, this is where it starts. Like, this is the beginning of my career in law and politics. And um, it's really cool. That's awesome. You're an amazing young lady. And we're glad to have you here. Aww. Always. You're such nice. a sweet girl. You know, if anybody gives you any trouble, Irish and I, are we're taking off from two locations. They got problems. We show up. Yeah, you get you end up in the White House. I'm like going to be right there. To Director of security, man. Keep this young lady if, if safe. You can, dude. If you can find a blazer to fit me, if not, I'm staying in my t shirts. Because I don't know if they make shoulders that wide in blazers. We probably have to have one <laughs> custom stitched for you. Yeah, yeah we got to feed him too. He's Looks expensive. Like he eats like a horse. <laughs> He's a fucking Clydesdale, I tell you. Looking like Ric Flair ate Ric Flair five times. Woo! Uh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to the man himself. Yeah. He used to stumble around. Him. I'm going to check and see. Um, Let me ask you, Memphis, I see you in the monitor. We're about to bring you on. Can you hear us? You can't hear us? Memphis. What Hold on. We're bringing him on. Have headphones? Hey, Memphis. My man. Yes, sir. How you doing? I'm excellent. Can you hear me perfectly and flawless and 3D sound? Well, well, I, well let me see. Test, test one, two. Another thing is let me ask you a question. If a horse's front legs is doing 55 miles an hour, what's his back legs doing? Uh oh. I don't know. Come on, man. Hauling ass. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 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 You know, 
I really need a drum set here, like right around me strategically. So when people say shit, I can do circus drumming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's get you a drum look, set. Sam's getting a cancer you up. Kick, out of, kick, kick everything just out of hand. Oh, man, look at Sam yeah. run. Run, Sam, run. Well, I'm glad to be with you guys this morning, man. It's a privilege. Dick's chasing yeah, Sam. <laughs> I have little legs, though, so, you know. <laughs> oh, there we go. And, little you know, legs well, can haul ass when the bubblegum lights turn well, out. Well, that's like that's me. That's true. Was, all I got to do is run, outrun all use. Hey, well, yeah. guys, hey, hey, you know, I, I, I once dated a young lady. She was six foot nine. I'm only five eight, right? Wow, I, man. I used to suck her titties and kick on her shin bone. Oh, man, I love it. I love it. There I go, man. Get those ribs. I want them sweet and juicy, baby. Yeah. All right. You're good. My kind of woman. Yeah, I told you that I like this guy. Just I, I, How I got to know him is our afternoon guest um, sent us a um, – I, I said, well, we had a cancellation, and I'm having a brain fart, which is really terrible. Uh, it's Levon. I'm sorry. Le, Levon Levy Bird. Excuse me, and uh, he's going to be on today. Another excellent guitar player, but um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just uh, guys hang out for a little bit. I'm just going to ask him a couple of questions. I'm going to give you guys each a shot to come in and talk about what you think is important and what I haven't asked. Because look, man, I have the best and the brightest minds in the business. Thank okay. You, God. <laughs> so um, I got a great team here. Look at them all. They're like, look at him. What's oh, he yeah. sucking up I'm to a- us for? What's he I doing? He's got ulterior <laughs> motives. But, all right. So um, let, let's just uh, do this. Uh, I will bring them back in a moment. Bye-bye. And uh, let me get Wrong myself one. in. I know. Oh, hi. Hi. <laughs> Remove. All right. Look at that, my crack. T- when I talk the best and the brightest, I'm not including myself in this. Uh, lineup. That's <laughs> anyway. right. But we all stand on giants, you know, on the shoulders yes, right. of giants. That's right. That's right. That's right. So, how are you? L- welcome to the man. show, guys. I'm just man. I'm <laughs> this morning, I'm happy as a gay guy with a bag of dicks, man. Oh man, I love it. I'm happy with the Sicilian <laughs> boys cab. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm going good. over to Michael Jackson's house to ride the Ferris wheel. <laughs> Hi, <But> Mikey. You- <laughs> You no, know, it's but sad. Yeah, Michael yeah. Jackson, I listened to some Michael over the weekend. I was sick and I have a bunch of it. And I forgot right. how great, just great some of those records are that him and yeah. Quincy did. They're an unbelievable guy, a tragic tale. Right. And, you know, it's one of those things that I still can't make up my mind for sure about whether he was just this innocent childlike guy. Right. Or right. More sinister character. I don't know. And I don't think. Well, he's di- he, he's different, man. I mean, he was a different he guy. Was, I, he was different, mm-hmm. you know. I think he had a pretty hellish childhood. Uh, yeah. His father wasn't really a good guy, and that, and yeah, you know, even watching it, like everybody, once he became the one, mm-hmm. you know, his whole life, everybody, you think about it, everybody he had in his world wanted something from him, yeah, whether it was yeah. money or a house or whatever, yeah, and and you know. I'm sure there was resentments, uh, and, and I have band members former who I'm not even related to, and we have resentments sometimes. Right, right. You know, I'm, I'm too old now to have resentments about anything. Right. I figure it's it's, all, right. it's just there's no reason to, um, you know, be that right. kind of guy. It's just, exactly. you know, life's too easy to to have to run around all scowling and yeah, man. angry, Keep, and if somebody fucks yeah. you over, well, like what, what happened? You know? Yeah, exactly. It, no matter, you know, when we're young and naive, we think how. It's just going to be like everybody's going to be nice, right? Right. You know, you get up in your middle ages and you go, "No, people sometimes are just son of a bitches," and you know, oh, yeah. tell them to oh, have, get them out of your life, folks. Get bad yeah. people. If you waste your life trying to change other people, that's right. You'll Man, go crazy. Yes. Exactly. You'll never get them. So, that's anyway, right. tell me how you got started in playing music. Wow, man! I tell you, I well, 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 well. You know, as we all grew up, we our parents held these kind of friends that they come over to your house and you, you don't know right then that they're famous and you don't know who they are. All you know is that your mother and father knew these people. Well, some of my, mm-hmm. some of my father's friends were Sister Rosetta Tharp. Oh my God. Lord um, Utah, uh, Utah Smith. I don't know if you ever heard uh-huh. of him. He, he did this song called Two Wings. Five is he called Two Wings. Okay. Uh, also another old man named, uh, um, Reverend Robert Tim Wilkins. I, I, played, I, heard I, played, 
I played in church with him on Sundays, and I didn't know, you know, looking at this guy that that the, that uh, uh, Mick Jagger and all those guys had recorded, had re, you know, recorded some of his music right. and, and made millions. You know what I'm saying? But as a boy growing right. up, I never knew this until I got into my around around my late twenties. I said, "Wow, I know all these people," you know. And um, so finally, I started. I, I but you know, I had I got a long story, man. So it it, it would take okay. me a, take quite, your time. You know, but I, I went in the military, uh, you know, as a as a young man. I I, I had just turned eighteen, and um, of course, my father um, didn't speak to me for two years because when I, I volunteered to go in the military, and Vietnam was right there. You know, it was you know seventy four, and I caught about the last ten months of Vietnam in in Vietnam. In you know, my my first right. ten months, you know, and um, what year was that? That was like 74. I, and they, okay. it just, I got there in early 74 and stayed there to almost 75. And then I left and mm -hmm. went to uh, Athens, Greece. And I, oh, I what a great day. Yeah, what a yeah. Good <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, oh, I ended up pretty Greek ladies. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, I'm the only black Greek I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, man. That's... Opa! More Opa. Of Let's, no, let's no, dance. No, hey, no, oh, no, hey. No, no, I can no, dance no, anywhere. Exactly. You might not want to dance with me, though, because I tend to have... Kind of... It's amazing being a drummer and having good sense of rhythm yeah. and timing and singing while doing it. Exactly. But get me on the dance floor. I spent my whole life sitting behind a drum kit entertaining people. Right, right. As far as learning to dance... My two ex-wives will both tell you, not <laughs> worth doing. My last girlfriend will tell you, it's not worth the effort. And my present girlfriend, she'll she'll dance with me, but she knows she's like dancing with a scared kid. I don't <laughs> know I, what this guy's going to stop on my foot next. That, yeah, I've got some I've got some toe tails myself, man. I'll tell you, I've stepped on some toes out there on, on the dance floor. But but man, you know, like I say, uh, like I said, all this music thing came along, kind of. Growing up, you know what I'm saying? Because I was playing in the church, of course. I used to play all them old... I was a, grew up in a Pentecostal church. Whoa, uh, you yeah. know, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that... Check, 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 check. And oh, I yeah. Would, I, would, I would make them shout all night, you know. And uh, Oh, man, you know, people don't realize you play those tunes, those old spirituals at a yeah. gig. It's the same... It's the same the thing. The blues came out of that gospel tradition exactly. and a lot of other traditions of music. Exactly, you know, it's, man. Exactly. It's some, and then the, the migration, for people who don't are aware right. of it, but I know we do, right. uh, that migration out of the South after the war, everybody heading up to Chicago. Yeah, exactly, Memphis. exactly, exactly. And that, and then the people, <laughs> some of them went to New York, some of them right. went to Chicago, the Memphis sound. And if it's like barbecue, if you know your barbecue, yeah, man, right, you know man. where, you, <laughs> you know, know the different <laughs> flavors and what. It's like that's the only right. barbecue I don't really care for is the North Carolina style where they oh, use the man. vinegar. I, 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 hear, I, I know. Are you, me, you both, man. I'm saying I can't. It's the only kind of barbecue that it just. I, Chopped up. I don't like the texture of it, and the uh, sauce don't do it. Give me yes. some Memphis or Texas or That's Florida right. or yeah, Georgia, yeah. South yeah, Carolina, but yeah, not but that that, is... that 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 vinegar sauce. Man. I've driven between Florida and New York so many times, and right. I've stopped, and I get I'm like I forgot I've been up here for five years without a trip south. And on the <laughs> way down, I stopped at a great barbecue spot, I went in and ate it, and I was just it was good, uh -huh. but it wasn't what I wanted. Exactly. I had my I wanted some beef that was sliced beef yes. barbecue. I yeah, wanted some man. ribs covered in some good <laughs> sauce. And, um, you know, even in Tampa, a friend of mine used to take me to a place. I'm trying to remember what the name of it was. Mm -hmm. it, it was a it was a black barbecue place down in the hood. Oh, right, 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 right. In this That's hood, barbecue, in Tampa back then, there was dirt streets still. <laughs> and my friend and I are as white as you can get. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. he drives me over. He goes, we're going to go to this barbecue joint. And you're going right. to freak out how good it is. Right. It's this little cinder block building, right. barbecue, like a screen room over it. Uh huh. Big black lady up front. She, <laughs> when I walked in there, it was like having an experience. It's like going right. to the black church the first time. Yeah, oh, I already know. I already we know. walked in, and I hear she going, "Bring me some more butts." She's got a cleaver <laughs> the size of my head. Coming up, she's back cutting up the sandwiches like you could not believe. This woman was making sandwiches, wow, swinging them out man. the door, and I still, when I get down there. If I'm in the Hillsboro Avenue, <laughs> I'll go next well, time I'm in Tampa because it's cheap too. It's not yeah, New York barbecue. Yeah, well, you can't stop it. You can't eat any good barbecue at a big, these big, corky type places. I mean, corky's got yeah. good barbecue, but some of those little shit house 
you know, places, man, that you see, they got the best barbecue menu you would ever taste in your whole entire life. You know? Yes, and, and it's a, and it's something that I call it yuppie barbecue. Here in New York, you can go out to yuppie. a barbecue place, uh, yeah. and you can spend 50 bucks a head on barbecue, and there's I something wrong with that. that. I should say the old chop you do. You know? Yeah. I, I oh, <laughs> I, I've said it before. If I could get a guy who really is the rib master to come up here. I had a friend in, in Florida who did that. Black well, cat who had his own fucking slab thing. A big I'm, your man. I'm your man. <laughs> man. He would pull up uh, and he'd make a thousand dollars a day. Oh, he'd sell out every bit of barbecue, cornbread, right you could, barbecue, cornbread, oh, yeah. beans, rice, and it was just like coleslaw. Oh man, great! Oh man, the I best. Know. I'd stop at home on the way on Fridays and pick up my barbecue for the weekend for the kids and I, and we, you know, <laughs> and it was good. And yeah. uh, just at yeah. any rate, but get, getting back yeah. to you, um, yeah, uh -huh. when you when you first started playing um, professionally, did you find any? Did you have your church going people get upset with you or did they dig the blues oh, tradition? Oh, my that my whole family, man, are all sanctified. Everybody I know is all sanctified, filled with the precious Holy Ghost, and they speak in tongues of, of others. I oh, guess right. Say. And uh, but no, uh, blues in my household was a taboo, man. I mean, you know, I'm I mean, you know, I, I feel like once my well, my dad probably played blues or listened to blues before he got saved, but once he got saved, boy, don't we don't listen? No, we don't listen. To oh him. man, don't, that, that, don't do in this house. You know what I mean? Wow, man. Yeah. I, you know it's so different. You know, a lot of white kids have no idea how different it is growing up in the oh, black community. Oh my god! Because between went to church. I went yeah. to church, I went to church sometimes, man, five days a week. I mean, I would go just mm -hmm. un religiously to church, 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 church. I would literally, right. I would literally be sleeping class all day from the night before in school, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? From being up at church all night, you know. So man, that, that you you're right. You're absolutely right. That that church thing is it's engraved. I, I, I had a lady who was a customer of mine, a black lady. Mm -hmm. And uh, my friend and I, we were kind of partners in this little auto called it um uh, auto farm. We sold right. the cars and farm implements and okay. whatever we could get and make a buck on. Right, but, right, right. She was one of our first customers, and she came in and bought a car for herself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took care of her, gave her a good deal, very fair. Like back then, we could charge like twenty seven percent in her interest. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this was back like in in the nineties. Okay, uh, right, 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 late nineties. Right. Mm -hmm. And you could literally, it's hard to be a used car car dealer and be a good guy and do it but oh i know yeah but it can be done and that's what we did so right. a year after she bought the first car she rang me up and wanted to call a car for her daughter her granddaughter excuse me uh -huh. who's graduating uh -huh. so i get her to find the car I, i'd go to an auction she told me what she was roughly looking for and i worked it out we so showed her several cars and i went right, and right. Got a, we bought three of them that i picked for her but she <laughs> okay. ended up buying one well the day she came to get it with her kids, she was so excited and she was so nice to, about me. She was so polite and nice. Right. She goes, she's telling all her grandkids, Mr. Van Erty here is a really nice guy. And I said, you don't have to call me Mr. Van Erty. I'm Neil, man. You know, <laughs> okay, right, I don't, you know, or don't call me sir. She just have beards. You know, I mean, I'm just uh -huh. a long haired rock and roll right. guy. Right. But um, she said, would you like to come to church with me this Sunday? Oh, oh and I man. said, I, I almost said, hell yeah. <laughs> my normal heathen response you know right, right right it was like watching the reverend james and the blues brothers i thought to myself you know son you need a little church or not so. right, right 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 and i'm not I, i'm like always open to trying something new you know go to a church i've never been to i like uh -huh. people you know uh -huh. and i don't have to necessarily sign up to still like them or to get a good piece of information but exactly um, so after you getting back to you after uh -huh. the um after you how long after you were playing the blues, you would go to Nam? Like, did that happen prior I, well, or after? Well, no, that, that's I, after. You know, I said most of most of my childhood from the time I was four or five years old. I, well, let's, let's go back just a little bit. I can tell you a little bit about this. When I was about 10, 11, <clears throat> I used to sneak down on Beale Street. My daddy wouldn't would would not. Uh, oh my God, he found that. Well, well, let's put it like this. He didn't know I was going down there because I had, you know, back in the day, we had to, you turn to put your garbage can up at the window and you sneak out and you sneak back in. You right, know, right, you know, right. So I've never, it's alleged I've done that. But. Exactly. And, uh, but anyway, I just sneak down there and man, I would, man, I would 
tap dance and do all kind of little songs that I really knew, like, oh, right. baby, you don't have to go. Ba-plonk, ba-plonk, ba-plonk. I never really just knew a lot about playing the guitar. But anyway, make a long story short, one night, my daddy caught me coming through the window, man. He, he And I guess it was about 11, 30, 12 o'clock, you know. And he pulled me through this window, man. He says, boy, where have you been? I says, dad. I, and I reached in my pocket and thinking, and I gave him all my money. And I had about 65, 66 dollars in change and dollars and stuff. And he looks at me and he says, wait. I said, I've been on Bill's feet. He said, I've been, I've been trying to make some money. And he grabs my money. He says, just don't let me catch you down there. <laughs> I didn't mind taking that money, though. Yeah, he didn't mind taking the money. Exactly. Yeah, man, he had a good collection for the church that day. Maybe exactly. a little better. Maybe yeah. maybe some groceries. Who knows? You know. Exactly. I but, mean, you know, but after that, like I said, then then uh, like I said, but I didn't play any more than blues until I got out of the navy, and I spent about all oh, eight. I spent the first eight in the navy, then went back in for reserves for about six years after I had got out the first time, and. Uh, but then I Did you play doing, in the military with any of your friends? I, every I, every now and then I would do a USO something. We go. It's, it right. wasn't like you know we pull into a a, a port or something. We go to the USO uh, club and sure. they would have drums there. They would have a guitar or two that was didn't have no strings on it or had yeah, maybe or, five strings on it. You know something. You know. But I would pick the guitar up and every now and then. But I really didn't do any just playing, playing. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. Until well, I got out, I, I, I know my two uh, cohorts here have some questions for you. Hey, Go hey, ahead, hey! Guys. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna, guys. I'm gonna just step out and let you. I'm gonna, you know, powder my nose and do all those things. I'm looking a little shiny. <laughs> Am I? I'm looking a little shiny myself, don't I? Oh, okay. So I, I, you know, <laughs> this is rock and roll, man. All right. You want rock and roll front row? You got it. Here's <laughs> Sam and Irish. Hey, how you Sam and Irish? How you doing, guys? Good. Hey, good, how are good. you, man? Good I'm to meet got, you. Bang, nice to meet you guys too. I can't complain for an old man. You know, I'm still kicking. It don't help anyway when you do. That's right, because ain't nobody listening no way. <laughs> <laughs> Sam, take off, yeah. man. What you got, Sam? Hey, so uh -huh. I, I'm excited to meet you, though. I've been hearing a lot about you. Neil's been telling me about you for about a week. Okay, but, okay. Uh, I didn't catch. Where are you coming from this morning? Well, I'm in Arlington, Virginia. I'm right here on the East Coast. Uh, this is I'm right here in the, um, they call it the, uh, Merrill Martin Del Del V DC Virginia. Anyway, I can get to DC in like five minutes, and I can get to Maryland in like ten or fifteen minutes. You know, so the Del Marva they call it. Yeah. All right, you're the hub. Uh huh. Arlington, Virginia. I find that this right where I'm at now is for me as a blues guy. I think I can make more money from here, from New York to on down the. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. It's gorgeous out there. And plus, anywhere that you're on the East Coast, you're going to find blues fans. Exactly. Here. Exactly. Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, Kingfish is probably one of my current oh, absolute favorites. I that love boy is awesome. He is, he is, he is, oh, yeah. He's going to be a bad boy one of these days. I mean, he he's a bad boy team. now. I mean, he's, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> is there any other way um, to play? What? Is there any other way to play? Um, no, nah, not really. <laughs> they they got they they all got it from me. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Right. has got to get it somewhere. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, I, I'm just I'm really just um, glad that a lot of the young guys are trying to, you know, keep the blues going because, like I said, one thing about the blues, and you and you can and I can tell you this, you can be a hundred years old and you can play the blues. There are no there's no cutoff on the blues now. I know Beyonce going to be out one of these days. She's going to be too. She's going to be too too old to do what she does. But the blues, you can sit down and tell. Um, you can play it till you die. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, absolutely. Classic yeah. storytelling. I mean, any any genre always has their core bases. Whether it's blues, rock, country, right. it doesn't really matter. Right. You're, you're always able to tell your stories through music, and it always comes through better because people can relate to it. That's right. That's right. That's right, man. I'm telling you. Yeah. Here in Nashville, we've got a huge blues scene. And well, see, I'm from Memphis, so if you're in Nashville, so you're right down the street from me, I call it right down the street from me. Yeah. So it's like 199 miles to my door. Yeah. Yeah, that's where I'm from originally. From. So, do you live in Nashville now? Yes. Are you from, originally from I'm Nashville? I'm from Nashville originally. I'm from Southeast Kentucky originally. I came down here uh, for music, been down here for the last like three, four years now. Wow, so. wow. You're not going to believe this. 
when I was in the Navy, I, I dated this girl from a little place called Elizabethtown, Kentucky. And it was up on like Me a town. mountain. And child, she was <laughs> cornbread fed. She was like, she, I mean, this girl was like, you ever, you ever see a little Abner? Yeah. Oh my God, this girl was fine. It's pretty. She was, and I mean, I used to Woo. her her brother and sister. I, I, she took me home with her one time, and her dad her dad came out like, "Why are you doing that, son?" He said, "Uh, where are you from?" I said, "I'm from Tennessee." He said, "Treat my daughter right now." Treat my daughter right. I said, I, I, and her little sister and brother, they were like, they was coming up to me, like trying to figure out, you know, could this black come off. You know, they were like, oh, <laughs> hell no. <laughs> but this was back in the 70s. And here I am, I had to be crazy riding with a white girl all over yeah. the, the South, you know what I'm saying? Me and her, you know, together. This was in the 70s, you know what I mean? So uh, I had to be a, I had to be crazy. I probably, but I'm still here. <laughs> you just thinking with your other parts. That's okay. That's, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's what that's, we do, Sam. That's, that's what the we good, do. Let's say one that thinks, it, it, one that thinks, and one that stinks, huh? You know, it, it got it. Just goes back to it again. I mean, if you look at this, just just these three people right here. Yeah. You want to talk about? You know, music does diversity. Oh does. man, it is it the is. universal language that brings us all together, man. I that's love right. That's I right, man. It. You cannot, you cannot have anything better than music, and that's why I say that we people who are musicians, man, we got to get out there and just keep. I don't want to get into mm -hmm. politics, but we got to keep, you know, keep people keep sane. The pressure on, yeah, keep, keep people sane. Yeah, you know, if people spend music more time. Listen that's, to that's, music. That's the gel that holds our community together. That's without right. it, there are without two it, we things are that affect, that's yeah. exactly there are right. two things that affect people in modern mm -hmm. time, and mm -hmm. that is pop culture and non fictional media. So, yeah, it's the news. yeah, that, that, and that, 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 that news. was not trustworthy anymore. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. what, we what have happened? the ability to affect people as yeah. artists. And what happened to giving a person your word? You know what I mean? My word is my bond. You know what I'm saying? Yes, if I sir. tell you, if I tell you a chicken dip snuff, you would look up in his wing and find the box. You hear me? You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> I like that so, one. Yeah, man. But that's what we got to do. And like I said, the only way we can do it is music. Uh, I'm doing some, and I, I and I'd love to open up for some of you big time rock guys. And that's another thing because I think it ought to be more. Uh, I know some big guys, big names out there, but I think they should pull some of us guys up by the bootstrap. And see, I have never wanted to give my money, all my money to some record label. So mm -hmm. I've been doing them, I've been doing my thing all these years, man, just penny by penny by penny by penny. And I don't have a lot of money, but I made a kind of a reputation for myself, especially overseas. I've been to 48 countries playing the right. blues. I'm on the cover of the four oldest blues magazine in the world. And I made it before James Brown and Ike Turner. They had to die in order to get on the cover right. of these magazines. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man. Uh, uh, God has been good to me, man. And I want we got to stay focused. You know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and help people. You know, you got to pull somebody up, man. You know, and uh, so man, I love this guy. It, yeah. You know, everybody always says, that, "Oh, blacks and whites, we don't get along." And I'm like, I just don't see it in my day to day. I know there's some people who are foolish so on both sides. Yeah, but I got no that's what they want though. That's yeah, right. what division social conflict yep. is what everybody above us in the administration wants. They yeah. want that is called the overlay for throat. the underplay. Exactly. Because not, they want it so to seem like we're at each other's like throats as well. Because exactly. the news will make it seem like something is so much worse when it's actually not and then it causes a problem that actually right. does make something right and i tell a lot of people i tell a lot of people my, my daddy told me this he said son you got 12 months of the year he said you got six months to mind your own business and six months to leave everybody's business alone <laughs> and so, you know an old blues man once told me he said and i've always remembered it because it was one of those moments he said son <laughs> If you don't want to get in trouble in this life, he said, don't mess with a man, his money, or his it's, manhood. That's right. <laughs> and I just went, man, my family didn't have any kind of cool saying like that. It was so <laughs> succinct, easy to remember, and just like, it's like Chris Rock says, if you don't want to get your ass kicked by the police, don't open your window with, hey, motherfucker. That's right. And then the guy starts <laughs> clobbing him, drags him out, and then exactly. he goes back. Have you seen the bed? <laughs> 
it's like and, funny because I'm gonna tell you, as a black guy, I have never had problems with the police. Why? Because I know how to say I'm a southern boy, and when it's yep. time for me to tell me to, to kick my ass out of a jam, I know how to say yes, sir. No, no sir. sir. Yeah, I yes, sit up in my seat, I don't sit back in my seat talking about got your I'm, hands where yeah, you can see them, you know. Exactly, exactly. Me so too. This, and I've been into some of the most yes. un uncomfortable positions as a black guy all down through the south because I grew up in the south, you know what I'm saying? Right. So you but know what at, I do. Yeah, yeah. Those crackers who don't like black people are yeah, fucking you just have to know real how to nasty with, people. Yeah, you know how to get along. So okay, I'm I'll most talk to you blacks, later. Most yep. blacks and whites though, that I know in the yeah. south who are of lower middle class and, yeah. and poor people, they, they get along yeah. great. Yeah, man. It's people who are kind of like well off middle class, it's like in the Communist Party. It was all intellectual rich kids exactly. who want to kill their parents. Exactly. You know, and today the people who really uh want to do us damage. But how about this? Instead of talking about all this negative, you yeah, want to play a little bit? Let's play some. Let's play that's some. The thing man. that I love about Nashville too is he's getting his guitar. <laughs> We have such a diverse and inclusive just mm -hmm. culture and community down here. Like, oh, yeah. I, I, I love Kentucky, but I'm very glad I don't live there anymore. Oh, yeah. 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 I love it's it's going to get better, though. It's going to get better. If the whole, I mean, things are going to get better. Trust me. Right now, we think every so often shit just I guess all messed up. I don't care who it is because the, the devil or whatever, whatever that bad energy. I want to say I want to say the devil because. I don't know what it is, but whatever that bad energy that 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 covers that cloud sometimes yep. when, when those clouds go away and you see the sun, man, it's a good feeling, ain't it? But that goes it sure back to the music. I mean, you know, it, it we we're we're glued together by music. That's yeah. right, that's right. Uh well, well, are right. y'all ready are y'all re ready for this? We're ready Absolutely. to hear. All well, right, well, everybody. I, I, if I would, I'd like to tell you a still kind of a story. I don't know if you can see me. Can you see me pretty good? Oh, I yeah. see you pretty good. Well, well, well. See, there, like we were talking about, there are two entities. When I grew up, the one was the on Friday night, man, you was gonna go to a juke joint, man, and you was gonna get down. Now, this was this is what kind of music you played. That you, I heard when I go to a juke joint. Next day, when you get ready to go to church on Sunday, now after working hard all week, you want to go back to the juke joint. Back in church. Ha <laughs> ha. Now that's the difference between two the a juke joint, it's, like you said earlier, Ooh, yeah. there wasn't that much difference between gospel music and uh and uh you know juke joint music. I mean all the changes are pretty much the same, you know, but that's kind of give you a different uh a style of both, you know, one on Friday night black folks gonna go and they're gonna be at them juke joints and mm -hmm. uh you know, on, on Sunday, they're going to be at church, you know? So that kind of give you a little bit of something. Well, that sounds good. Well, uh, how about uh, play, play us a couple of that? Just pick something you really like playing. All right. Well, let me you give it. got about 10,000. All right. <laughs> I, wish, I wish I had that 10,000. But uh, I'll tell you what, though. Do you, do you uh, let me see. I can, I, can, I, can I retune for a second? Can you give me, can of course. You give me a of course. Right. And by the way, um, our friend uh, Sam had to leave. She's going to meet the governor today. Get it, uh, Sammy. Get it. Get, 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 it, it. get it. ass, girl. It's always amazing to me, the, uh, you know, 12, uh, 12 notes in the musical scale. And so much can be said with those 12 notes. Oh, and man. also, man, yeah. special ho holler to Toby today. How you doing, babe? Toby, we love you, girl. 
Yeah. You know what? I got to say something for everybody out there. If you don't know Toby Simmons, you should. Um, she's just exceptional, and we love her. Uh, you know, she, she, she does an awful lot. Here he goes. <laughs> Are y'all ready? I'll see. I'm absolutely ready. All right, everybody. Here we are. Some more Memphis gold. I dig it. For everybody watching, he's doing an opening, open tuning. I, I don't know. Is it drop D? What are you doing? Well, uh, yeah, I had drop. I was a drop D tuning, but okay. I'm back. In, I think I'm back. I'm back with the uh, regular tuning. All right, here we go. Yeah, we lost him. I know his mic's muted. Shit. <laughs> bring bring us back up. Hold on. Shit, this is bad. Hold on. Uh, okay, everybody watching. We just uh, his mic is dropped. We're gonna go ahead and get him on. Oh well, what's happening here? Um, hell, I could sit in. Uh, I can put I, <laughs> him back on. We're gonna get him a. Yeah, I know it's past the hour, uh, Irish. Uh, I hate it when this happens. That's one problem this program has. We can't alert him. Oh, I can. Hang on, I'm gonna send him a note on the screen here and see if that'll get him. Oh, while you're doing that, you know, again, Sam, good luck. Go get it, go kill it. We freaking love you. We're proud of you. Everybody here, so glad you're here. Uh-uh. And you know, he's just jamming away too. I know it's killing me because I can see he's tearing the neck off it. And I don't, I, I don't. Yeah, we got to get him back on anyway. I'm trying. Yeah, we're style. just letting like go, people. Him. For anybody watching you, uh, we're, we have our, our great friend Memphis Gold on with us this morning, and he's doing a great job with no mic on. Um, I'm going to bring him back. Ike, I mean, <laughs> your mic's off on your phone. Just, oh, there it goes. It's still off. Poor guy. He's muted. Can you unmute him? Uh, I tried. It's on his end. You're uh, muted on your end. Ah. Uh, there you are. All right. Hey, man, we got to get you to play the whole thing. Let me go yeah, back. take us out, back. man. Something, take something us out. Happened. And uh, I got to go back in and get it. Do they see you? Yeah, they see me. Let me see. Kyrie copy link. I did all that playing for nothing, I think. Uh, yeah, but that's all right. We're going to have you play. Uh, yeah, we can hear you. Copy. Okay. Okay, copy. Link. All right, and then t testing, testing. Can okay. you hear me before I start? Back okay. All right, there he is. I hear you. Hey, man. Memphis? He'll be back. He'll be so, back. Well, you know, while we're waiting, let's just remove his. He's got an empty space. There he is. There he is. Now, there he goes. There oh he is. Oh, my grace. I did all that plan, man. You know what? Yeah, I know. You know, know what? Listen, I was setting you perfectly up. I had a train If we were track. doing charades, I would say he's playing the blues. <laughs> Pretend. Is he playing the blues or gospel tonight? <laughs> no, it was very yeah, funny. Baby. Was the blues there. I know that face. <laughs> All right. Let's try that again, everybody. You want to try, man? Well, well this, we go. There we go. Look, let me give you a little hint. Up. This song is called, I wrote this song probably when I was in the Navy up on the 01 level. And it was called, I Got a Whole Lot of Woman. Y'all Stop Messing With Me. Here we go. Ooh, I like the big girl. Here we go. Y'all stop messing with me. 
I got a whole lot of woman. Y'all stop messing with me. I got a whole lot of woman, and I love her, can't you see? I did not make her. She made herself. She sits at the table and eats herself to death. I got a whole lot of woman. <laughs> Y'all stop messing with me. I got a whole lot of woman, and I love her, can't you see? She puts ice in my coffee. Sugar in my tank. The step woman got me so I can hardly think. I got a whole lot of woman. Y'all stop messing with me. I got a whole lot of woman. And I love her, can't you see? And one more thing. I may not have a nickel. She may not have a dime. But one thing for sure, this fat woman is mine. I got a whole lot of woman. Y'all stop messing with me. I got a whole lot of woman. And I love her, can't you see? I did not make her. She made herself. She sits at the table and eats herself to death. I got a whole lot of woman. <laughs> Y'all stop that with me. I got a whole lot of woman. And I love her, can't you see? You know what? She Tell put what? ice in my coffee, sugar in my tank. The fat woman got me so I can't hardly think. I got a whole lot of woman. Y'all stop messing with me. I got a whole lot of woman. And I love her, can't you see? And what? I may not have a knuckle. She may not have a dime. But one thing for sure, this fat woman is mine. I got a whole lot of woman. Y'all stop messing with me. I got a whole lot of woman. And I love her, can't you see? All right, all right, all right, all right, man. <laughs> man I'm, I'm, you're just so oh killer, my friend. <laughs> well, I love you, a whole lot of women. More to thank, love, baby. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. I appreciate you, man. And like I said, these old hands ain't, ain't young as they used to be, but you know, I'm, I had a, it's like a, well, well I, I just you're, commented, your sweeps are tight as hell, man. Well, yeah. thank you, man. <laughs> well, thank Absolutely. you, thank you, thank you. Well, you know, it's like, I kind of, I, I really don't play as fast as I used to. I try not to because. There was an old man told him, said, son, now he said, son, he said, let's don't run down there and get them old cow. Let's walk down there and, and knock them all down. Do them all. <laughs> That's right. Exactly, man. Well, listen, um, we're on. Would you mind to play a little? We got to go to a break real quick. Would you mind to play a little bit more? Sure. Sure, sure, sure would, man. No problem. I, you know, our show, we, we technically say it's an hour on Friday. Uh huh. I always like to know in my mind, we will let no show stop before it's time. Well, that's right. Can you hear me good? Can you hear everything oh, I'm doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. You really. What kind of guitar are you playing? Man, this is this old uh, talking man right now. I got a couple, two or three of them over here in the corner, man. I got, I, well, I guess I say more than two or three of them, but yep. I got quite a few, but I just I just kind of pulled this old thing out off the, off the rack. They're nice guitars. I got a talking yeah. man too. I, yeah, I think talking they're... man. They're pretty decent, you know. Yeah, for the yeah, price yeah. point, man. How the hell do you go wrong with a guitar like that? That's right. That's right. That's right. My wife told me, "Do I need an amp?" Come on, Bob. We're not doing amp thing. I, I don't need my little amp, sweetheart. Uh, why do you bring? Why don't bring the missus on? See if she'd like to join us. Say hello. Oh, 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 oh. okay. Well, hold on. See, see. That, she. Oh, no, yeah, no, of course. No, 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 she just wanted to see you. No. Oh. Now she said, "Oh no, she just oh no, oh no, oh no." She she's heard about my reputation, obviously. Hey, girl, what's happening? <laughs> she's running, man. She's my running. girlfriend do the same thing. She'll be out of here quick as a round. All I gotta do is say, "I'm gonna turn the camera on her." She's like, "Oh, exactly." All right, everybody watching, we're gonna have uh, Memphis right back, and uh, we're gonna just run, we're gonna run an ad real. I'm going to go to a commercial real quick, buddy. Okay. All right. Sounds all right. good. See you right <laughs> hey, back. Man. All right. See you right back. That's R-A-T Red Bank. All right. Let's see who we have. Hi, this is Leland Sklar, and I am hanging with Neve, and I am having the best time of my life. Live with Neve Fridays on the East Coast from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. <laughs> Hey everybody, this is Steve from Reach for the Sky, along with Jay from Reach for the Sky. And you're listening live. It's me. Hello there, my name is... Hello there, my name is...
is Andrea Salkis. This is Donnie Lulston, and we're live with Neve and having a great time. <laughs> All right, all right. <laughs> One and only Andrea Salkvist from Norway, my buddy and partner in crime sometime overseas. Oh, I, I tell you, that the shows that 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 been coming from, from his side, oh. Man, wow. he's a badass. He's tough, God plays B3 with his feet. Man, oh. the dude is bad. He, he can get up and do it himself and just entertain you. Or he can get up with his drummer, or he can get wow. his drummer, his bass, his sax player, and his when he gets his female singer in there, it's like some really if you like that B3 jazz from the 60s, green onions, the guy's just a badass. Yeah. Plus oh. classical, he's just a brilliant guy. And wow. We're glad I was just talk tickled pink. He uh, did a little jingle for me, it made my day when he sent it on. Good guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so listen, what do you want to play? Well, well, it's a little, it's a little, it's a little ballad, man. That I, that I, uh, I learned. This is one of the first songs that I ever learned when I was about oh, real, you know, you know, you get to learn your chords and stuff like that. With well, this song, I probably was about fourteen, and I really wanted to learn this song because I wanted to sing it to this girl who was about fifteen. Mm -hmm. She I always did like older women, you know what I'm saying? So she was about sixteen, fifteen, sixteen. I'm fourteen at the time, and. Uh, but her parents didn't like me because they thought I was, I had this really, oh, he's too handsome. Uh, you know, uh, he's got, oh, dimples. he's got, he's got dimples. You don't want to trust him. You know what I mean? Never so, trust it, a guy with dimples. Yeah, exactly. No. So, uh, you know, you're, I, you seem like such a nice personable guy. And I don't think that came about overnight. You know, I, mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. I tell you, I've seen some of the kids, my daughter drug home, one of them. <laughs> I, right. I'm like, I, come on in, man. What's up there? You know, right, right, I, right. I'd be like, this guy's a nice dude. What the hell? You know? Well, even, even though I was trying, I you know even I was trying to do it. Philly, Philly, you know what I'm saying, back in the day, I was still a nice guy, you know, tell me what man didn't do a little Philly, Philly when he's a little boy, you know what I mean, you know. Absolutely. Right. But anyway, there's, you, I, there's allegations that I deny, I, I, I do not recall. Here we go. Do not <laughs> well, incriminate yourself on live TV. Now. That's it's right, don't do, it. Done, don't, man. Do it, man. don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. After my last show where we talked about shit like this, my friend yeah. who's a lawyer was like, you really need to uh, remember the statute of limitations. Right. right. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, who would have known? I mean, I'm not doing it that bad. I really, you know, there's no, like, there was no heavy time involved, you know? Well, the old phrase, loose lips sink ships. <laughs> that's yeah, right, that's indeed. right. Well, anyway, this this song I was telling, I was doing what it was going. It, I was trying to tell this girl, you know, that I I needed to see her. You know what I mean? The name of it is "I've Got to See You," and you guys got to listen to this song because it's a, uh, it's 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 it's, it's not a really tearjerker, but it, it it'll make you think about. It, you know what I mean? Let's right. get it, man. All right, let's, let's get, get it. it. Here we go. I've got to see you. Somehow, not tomorrow, but right now, I know it's late, I can't wait, come on, and still away. Please, little girl, still away. And I know it's wrong asking this of you. But there's no other way I can, I can be with you. Yes, only your folks would approve. Don't you think it's, don't you know it's things like this? Yeah, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have to do. And oh, I won't tell. I won't tell anybody else. I'm gonna keep it. 
to myself. I know it's late. I can't wait. Come on and still away. Please still away. I like to play a little bit for you if I can. Oh yeah. I'm digging it. like this we wouldn't we wouldn't have to do you know I won't tell I won't tell anybody else I'm gonna keep it to myself I know it's late. I can't wait. Come on. Come on, little girl. Come on, my little darling. Come on and still away. All right. <laughs> Man, well, that is excellent. I'll tell you what, we have four minutes left. Would you uh -huh. like to play one more song? Because I enjoy hearing you more than me talking, I can tell you. Uh, here we go. This is a song I always sing I used to do in the church. All right, all right. Or oh, when them saints go marching in, oh Lord, I won't be in that number. Or oh, when the saints go marching in, or oh, when the saints go marching in, or oh, when them saints go marching in, oh Lord, I won't be in that number. Oh, when my saints go marching in. And one more thing. Oh, when they crown him Lord of all. Oh, when they crown him Lord of all. Oh, Lord, I won't be in that number. Oh, when my saints go marching in. Here we go, fellas. Oh, my. 